here is my roller coaster. And this is how it works. First, let's talk about the hill. The hill is where there is a free fall, and it has the best representations of the forces of gravity. The first hill is always the highest because it needs to give enough force for the marble to complete the ride. Next up is the loop. It is where there's the most obvious transformation of potential energy to kinetic energy. And of course, centrifugal force. And all of it is shown by arrows. Last is the two turns. And of course, the station where it drops and ends the ride. Of course, I had multiple designs and sketches at first. The first one used to have two loops, but then that didn't work with the amount of force the model had. The second had one loop too, but then it also didn't work. The last one, the modifications gave me a different shape loop and a smoother and more angled hill. Let's talk about labels, but before I get into it, I need to clear out that everything during a ride represents all of Newton's laws. And I'm only going to pick what best represents the specific law. First is Newton's first law of inertia. It would be best represented by this. Newton's first law states that if an object is in motion, it would keep in motion unless it's stopped by another force. So as we see here, the marble kept moving until it was stopped by the station. Next is Newton's second law. This would be best represented for when we calculated the mass of the marble and when we use the mass to find the best hill and angle for enough forces to move through the loop. Because force is equal to mass times acceleration. Last is Newton's last law and the third one. Of course, for every action or force the marble had against a track or anything, there was an equal and opposite reaction to it. Like the bounce when it reaches the station. The forces acting against the marble are friction and air resistance, as well as other factors. Let's talk about kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is highest, where potential energy is lowest. Or, I chose this part in the loop, as shown by the arrow. Of course, that's not the only place with kinetic energy, but that's just an example. Where kinetic energy is lowest is where potential energy is highest, and shown by the arrow. Now let's talk about this again, but for potential energy. Again, potential energy is highest where kinetic energy is lowest. So it's right here. And potential energy is lowest where kinetic energy is highest. Right over here, like I explained. However, of course, there are more examples of kinetic and potential energy. But let's talk about centripetal force and g-forces, gravity, etc. Gravity is labeled over here. This best represents the forces of gravity. Centripetal or centrifugal force, as labeled over here, best occurs in the loop. That, I would also say, g-force. 